You've either got soul or you haven't. You either play with soul or you mean it or not. And you're either the real thing or you're not. But I've never actually written a good song, I think, ever. I think it's not like... To me, if I listen to Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain or something, and Willie Nelson sings, that to me is a really great song. Music makes you small. It makes you realize that you, not just that you can be mistaken about lots of things, but also reminds you how, how small you are all the time. We had a sultry. Det er Mark Knopfler, der er Dire Straits. Det er ham, der synger, spiller guitar, skriver sangene, producerer pladerne og endelig samler et orkester, når det er tid til det. Dette møde med Mark Knopfler byder på Dire Straits, før og nu, et genhør og et gensyn med de populæreste numre og endelig en præsentation af den nye gruppe Notting Hill Billies. Det var i 1978, at Dire Straits slog igennem med det nummer, der nu er en klassiker, Sultans of Swing, her spillet ved koncerten for Nelson Mandela i juni 1988, med Eric Clapton som gæst. Det tog kun få år, før Dire Straits var et af de største navne inden for rockmusikken. Så store, at der ikke længere er noget, der haster. Det er således mere end fem år siden, man sidst hørte fra Dire Straits med LP'en Brothers in Arms. Først nu dukker han forsigtigt op på scenen igen med gruppen Notting Hill Billies, der har taget navn efter Mark Knopflers hjemmestudie, beliggende i Notting Hill kvarteret i London. Vi møder Mark Knopfler på et hotelværelse lige rundt om hjørnet. De seneste år har han brugt pausen fra Dire Straits til at skrive musik til film og producere plader for andre kunstnere. When you're producing somebody, it can be it can be really pleasant really nice but you're dreaming other people's dreams the same with with you know with film scores you you're dreaming somebody else's dream you're helping somebody else as best you can do what they do when you when, I mean it's good for you in a way because it it's not as a, such an ego thing you're just helping somebody else yeah. as best you can so it's good to ever do ever do that then you can go back to being the boss of your own band telling the road crews what they're doing maybe even get a cup of tea if you're lucky you know? yeah But uh, there's got to be a limit to that because uh, everything that I've done like that has put Dire Straits, the next Dire Straits tour or album would it further back, further back. Yeah. So just like this week, I turned down some production, I turned down a couple of films. I can't do it, even if I'd like to, mm-hmm. even if I wanted to do it. You know, you have to be, you, you have to learn to say no and just not yeah. be tempted by it. Are you eager now to get the dire straight thing yeah. starting? Yeah. But this break then, that's been in dire straight, has that been good yeah. to you? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. You stretch, you know, all these things stretch you. It makes your life more interesting. Yeah. Also, it's quite good being not being Im- in, as important as you think. You know, you're just not. And to a film, to a film director, you know, or a film producer, you're not really. If you're doing the score, you know, you. Not really a very important person. <laughs> Film people don't think musicians are very important. Uh-huh. <laughs> This is quite true. But, But neither y- are they. Yeah, yeah, right. So you like being stretched to see uh, what are my limitations, what, what yeah, more can I learn? Exactly. Like yeah. you learn that you're not very good at things. That's what you learn. Yeah. You learn that, you, you learn that what you should do is you should stick to the things that you know, you know how to do. Yeah. But don't you take that as sort of a challenge when you when you see your your limitations to try and, and break that barrier yeah you try it's a, or maybe athletic yeah. d- uh, demand or, yeah. you know challenge yeah. in some ways so you just see whether yeah, yeah you know you're faced with a really difficult job to do and you say yeah we'll do it we'll do this we'll mm-hmm. circle it and close in on it and get it done 
Are the songs ready for the next Dire Straits? Oh yeah, I've got. I've always got songs. Johnny down in the tunnel, uh, the Sultans you have in a pop. You, you seem to sometimes uh, uh, do some of your better songs or maybe more played songs from from uh, street situations. Uh, are you still able to <laughs> to to be on that level? I mean, with yeah, not as much as I'd like to be because if you're going to New York to do a promo tour, yeah. you know you're flying and you're at the airport and you're in a car going backwards and forwards so you're, and a lot of the times you're not in that situation as where you'd like to be uh, but that's up to me to change I mean it would be up to me to change that yeah. and, but I do still manage to get around and do and usual things that people do so you can still have the inspiration that comes from oh sure Uh, I've always I have been attracted to those kind of situations a lot, but people in limited circumstances yeah. expressing themselves that just always attracted me. I don't know why. I suppose it's because when people are in that situation, whatever situation they're in, a restricted, a dire straight situation, if you excuse the term. And if, but if they are somehow managing to, <coughs> to express themselves, <coughs> it's liberating. They're liberating themselves. I'm always attracted to people. <coughs> liberating them th themselves yeah. in whatever way through whatever kind of expression but you don't <coughs> you don't find those kind of situations so often on Concord as you do down the pub that's true. the oldest songs uh, money for nothing of course is uh, uh, um, a Same great song similar situation yeah in a, in a store yeah it was in a store well it was just a guy At the back, he, he did all the deliveries, and he was just there was a whole wall of TVs at the back of the store, and he was, there was all all they were all tuned to MTV, so he was just talking about the acts that were on. So the song is the guy talking. Mm. I actually borrowed a piece of paper and a pen from a salesman, and went and sat in the front window of the store. It had a kitchen display unit in the front of the store, in the front window, and actually sat in the front window of the store and started writing down some of the st these lines he was saying, you know classic lines yeah which just shows how important it is to go into stores every once in a while yeah exactly which just what we've been talking about yeah right? so i've got to, does that mean i've got to go and do my own laundry now oh uh, it could be a major influence on the song could be, i never like going to the laundry oh no, okay blues music is uh major influence to you and to a lot of other people but it, it is incredible to to think that it's still continuing is such a vital influence to my generation our generation to generations to come well if when I, when i first heard my uncle kingsley playing boogie woogie piano i was very small when i heard it and to me it was just never mind any lyrics or never mind any song just the music just the a 12 bar to me it was very important it was just these big blocks of logic you know sailing into place and you go yes this is for me <laughs> I like this <laughs> yeah this is for me yeah you know? so it, it 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 makes a harmonic reverberation in people yeah you know that's one thing that just the form And all the variations on the form do too, you know, all the different variations on it start to, and you start to get into things like 13 bars and other things that you really love now, you know, you develop a taste, just like developing a taste for wine or something, it's the mm -hmm. same thing. It's a very deep and big subject. Yeah. And the whole thing about playing and learning how to play different styles of playing, different ways of picking different styles, ragtime styles, country styles, flat picking, finger picking, all these different bits of music, you know, steel playing and everything else, tunings and music is just such a huge area. Mm -hmm. Even you're talking about a simple, supposedly a simple music, but it's it's endless, it's huge, big, beautiful, bigger than anything else I can think of. It's like Brazil, it's big. So there's still a lot of areas to discover. Oh, with music, it, it dwarfs you. Music makes you small. It makes you realize that you, not just that you can be mistaken about lots of things, but also reminds you how, how small you are all the time. Talking about the blues, although it is an influence on you, 
you have never sung the blues. <laughs> I don't think uh, on any of your lyrics there there isn't the word blues ever. <laughs> well, you take the blues and use them, you know. Yeah. You've either got soul or you haven't. You either play with soul or you mean it or not. And you're either the real thing or you're not. But like Eric could be described as a great blues guitar player oh, yeah. and, and, and other, but it, it, it seems like that you, you develop your own style within that. Well, I was never interested particularly in, because I never really had a record player or a record connection. So I didn't like learn how to play things exactly, 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 the record on and off. It was more just get the spirit of the thing going. Yeah. But some styles of picking you have to learn. It's quite tricky, you know, get your thumb going in the right way. And <laughs> you got to just sit down and learn it. Some things you've just got to learn. Yeah, and these guys way back didn't have that many takes or that many uh, tracks to record on. Yeah, but people, when somebody really wants to learn something, boy, they just go ahead and they learn yeah. it. They just sit there as kids and they just play and play and play and yeah. play until they get good, until they get to be able to do it. Right. You know, you, you, after you've done it for 20, 25 years or something, you get so you sort of do it okay. But it's so okay. Yeah. You become like what I am is really a, like a jack of a few <laughs> trades, master of none. That's what happens. You just because you get involved in a bunch of different areas, but you're never really becoming an absolute expert in any of mm -hmm. them. You just dabble about. And we just became a band by accident, really. We just because I've been who I am, I just started being unpleasant and uh, suggesting songs to do and say I don't like that song and I'm going to play this and just pushing myself in you know the way uh, way I can just being obnoxious really and uh, we just became a band by accident so it, and then when uh, it was time to get the thing on a on a record label uh, I didn't expect it to be a major label didn't expect it to be our labels, you know. Mm. But then the big labels really like the record, so it's all a surprise. So <coughs> it's all very pleasant. So the four of you got together and uh, started uh, discussing songs, and uh, you started suggesting songs. What what would be uh, like a typical night with the four of you <laughs> talking songs? Really unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. you know, very bad language gets used a lot. You know. Pretty, pretty much filthy, disgusting, ugly, horrible people. Yeah, really, we are. But beautiful songs. Yeah. Yeah. The, the only that's the only beauty in our existence, really. It, it comes out of songs, and um, yeah. the rest of the time it's all just cigarettes and yeah. just people swearing and stuff. But good songs always seem to come from an environment like the ones you just mentioned, doesn't it? Well, maybe it's a perverse world. It could be. <laughs> yeah. Out of so much ugliness, it's got to come something worthwhile. Then. Yeah. But there were a lot of songs to to choose from. Uh, Mark, you four together. You yes. Must know. Well, we know at least twenty songs between yeah. us. You know, play. <laughs> If a song was known by at least twenty five people, you'd say no, no, no. That's too well known. No. We actually know a lot of songs, but. The last time we played together, we played for three hours and we probably didn't get through a fraction of all the songs that we know. So if we ever get around to doing another record, which would probably be in about six or seven years' time after the next Dice Trades tour, we'll uh, have all suggestions ready for yeah. candidates for songs. But you were sort of uh, bringing to life the old tradition of just sitting and playing to each other and not watching television or whatever you do these days. Well, that's right. I mean, that's how Steve and I started by when we were playing together, we didn't watch television. We played music, and that's really yeah. uh, one of the reasons why you become quite good or halfway good as a player just by time spent doing it. You know, it's like any other job, just a lot of time spent playing. But why should we listen to these uh, old songs, Mark? Well, it's almost like why... Because they're they they are things of great beauty and 
character and depth and if you love songs you love these it's uh it's what it's what i am it's the reason these songs and songs like them are the reason why i've turned out the way i've turned out and that may, may not be all good you know but hey i can't tell you that if you don't it's just a love affair that he starts off as a love affair and continues. Uh, you've got to love it to do it, mm -hmm. to do it right. You've got, you've got to be in love with it. The break that's been there, are there influences you've, you've taken from your work with other people? Or what direction are your songs going I into? think they're getting even more juvenile than before. You know, even more. Yeah. Simple? Yeah. Simple-minded, I think, is better than simple. Eh? <laughs> that because you're getting older? Senile. Yep. Now that probably that because so much music now to me is just so horrible I think that it drives you even more towards roots based music and you end up I've ended up writing in more simple things yeah. and but I've never actually written a good song I think ever. I think it's not like for me, if I listen to Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain or something that Willie Nelson sings, that to me is a really great song. And it's just like a beautifully written song or something like that, beautifully sung. Mm -hmm. So, so that to get to the stage where you can actually write songs, like I'd be quite happy to be able to write a song or feel like going home or something. It'd be a great song to write. Yeah. So even though I'm not jealous of anybody, I would kind of wish I could write a song like that. Yeah. So that's maybe part of the motivation for still being out there. Maybe, yeah, learning how to learning how to write. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't actually do enough writing. I'm pretty lazy. Randy Newman. He he must have been a, a an influence on you bef before you started. Working oh with yeah, him. I've, I'm, I've been a fan of Randy's from the very first yeah. album since I was fairly young. You know. Yeah, and also I think he influenced songwriters a lot he, he influenced me a lot in terms of character I'm sure he opened up possibilities not that I'm conscious of but just opened up possibilities of what what you could do with with character that you could take a song like money for nothing for instance you can just take that character and make him the singer yeah you know which is what Randy's very very good at and does that with a lot of songs the singer is another person yeah, money that matters is sort of an, of an equivalent to that situation. Yeah, he has lots of songs like that. Yeah. Lots of songs like that. Ironical approach must be, in a way, a thing that you can relate to. I He's think. hilarious. I, I could actually make him laugh as well. He, he could make me laugh, no problem at all. So most of the time we're just rolling around, just crying, like laughing, and just... We had a really good time just laughing yeah. except when I was interfering with his music he's not used to having his music interfered with by anybody mm -hmm. never been never had somebody say you know <laughs> try it <laughs> what <laughs> so that was a shock to him yeah. it, it, have some idiot yeah. telling him you know yeah. suggesting something else that you could do with music it's unthinkable <laughs> but it's just just because he wasn't used to it he's a lovely man and we had really good fun I can tell you why I know we were having good fun, because we used to go to a restaurant from the studio every night, really near the studio, and it wasn't a very good restaurant. So if we'd been really interested in in the record, I mean, if we hadn't been interested in the record, we would have gone to find somewhere good to eat, but we never bothered because we just used to walk next door and then get back. So we must have been enjoying yeah. it. You know, you're conscious that you're living out dreams, not just for yourself, but for a lot of other people that just love music. Yeah. It's almost like you, sometimes it comes full circle, you know, the little kid. When I started learning how to strum guitars, I'd be about 15 years old, and, and I'd be one Everly brother, and my little mate would be the other Everly brother. And we'd sing all these Everly brothers songs. And I didn't know then Chet Atkins was mm. d d all, done all that stuff and played guitar and all of those things. But then when you write a song and the Everly Brothers record that song and then you find yourself on stage and the Everly Brothers are singing the song yeah. and Chet Atkins is there and you're playing the song. Yeah. 
your own song and they're singing it well it just comes the whole thing comes full circle and it's moments like that you can't you can't really share those moments with anybody mm. particularly because I mean you might say to somebody you know the Emily Brothers uh, blah, blah, blah. they go oh really what time's the match yeah. you know but it means a lot to you
Efter plade og turné med The Notting Hill Billies kommer turen igen til Dire Straits. Pladeindspilning og efterfølgende turné, men det bliver tidligst en gang i 1991. You have that commitment to them, you know, they've got a commitment to you. Yeah. And it means stuff to people. People get get seriously peeved, you know, if they think you're not going to turn up and play ever. They really get they get annoyed about it. It's disappointed about it. It's good. It's good. You have a friendship going with a lot yeah. of people all over the world. You might as well keep it going. Yeah. So that's what you're going to do next. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I really am. That's what I'll do till I fall over. Because I really it's the best thing I can do, I think. Okay. We're looking forward to see you. Well, I'm looking forward to being there. <laughs> 